Hey, in this short tutorial, we are quickly gonna go over how to use the new Image AI Studio. Um, we just added the new Flux model, and uh, we recommend everyone using this new model instead of the old models, because um, it just generates way, way better results. So let's quickly go over how to use this new model. Um, I'm gonna show it um, on two examples. One is gonna be a figurine, and one is gonna be a weapon, which you can use in, for example, game development. Um, we'll start with a weapon. Uh, in my case, let's start with We'll, we can choose something out of the prompt library. Um, it's always good to use that for inspiration. For example, let's use this prompt. Let's copy it in here. Let's say um, a hammer. We want to generate a game asset, in this case a hammer. Let's say a 3D model of a hammer. Uh, medieval style, Disney style. We can remove Disney style. Um, let's also add game asset because that generates it in a game asset style. And let's also add details. Um, we can play around with the, with the settings, but it's also recommended to use interference steps of around 30 to gener generate better results. Um, a guidance scale, you can just play around with it. I like to put it at around four, that's it generate. This doesn't take long at all. It usually generates in about four to five seconds max. Um, and as you can see, it's already done. And uh, this is the image it's generated. I don't like the style of that yet. So I'm gonna adjust it, let's say stylized. Um, and let's also add, let's say Disney style. Let's generate again. I'm um, hoping for more like a game asset kind of style. Um, we can also play around with the guidance scale if that doesn't fit our liking. That's way better. That's more like how I imagine it to be like. Um, what the guidance scale is basically how your image sticks to the prompt. Like should it be exactly like you said in the prompt, then you put it at seven. Let's put it at eight and see what that generates. That also should be done any any second now. And as you can see, the images are pretty high quality already. So with this new model, you don't really need to um, put it through an upscaler. I like this one as well. But, but we're gonna use uh, this thing here. Let's check it out. Let's see how the quality is. Um, it's not bad, but I still would run it through an upscaler. Let's quickly do that. Let's set the scale factor at 1 and let's set the creativity really low so um, it sticks to what is already there. Let's hit stylized, hammer and 3D and let's hit uh, upscale. And now it's done upscaling so we can hit download and let's go into image to 3D. Let's try the new beta model. Let's put that in here. Um, we can keep the option as is. I like to put it at high because like such models it usually don't require like high quality or high topology but I always put it at high to get uh, like high quality 3D model. Uh, we can keep the prompt empty so it generates a prompt based on the image. That's fine for me. Let's it generate. And as you can see that generated a 3D model and that doesn't look bad at all. Um, what we could do now is of course we can hit download and use it in a game. 3D animation, whatever, or we could put it into the texture eye tool. Um, you could hit this icon here and it loads the model into the paint tool. And you can now, I like this creative model a lot. Um, I usually put in a value of uh, 0.1 and a resemblance of 2.9. And I can say stylist hammer and it generate. And that generates a new texture, as you can see. Um, you can now paint over the generated model and apply a new texture, but that's not the point of this video. That's for another video. Um, we can now go over to the image eye and generate another model. Um, you can still use, of course, the pixel sigma art model to um, generate pixel art. Let's say, for example, for the hammer we just generated, um, we want to make a pixel art icon, for example. So we can say stylized hammer game asset and let's hit generate and for this you could for example use this for game icons you could use this for weapon icons um, or whatever you wish basically as this generates for images you can choose one which fits your liking I don't like any of these so you could adjust the prompt adjust the styling to your liking adjust the settings till you find an image which fits your, need, fits your needs um, it's always recommended to play around with the prompt a bit um, you'll see that in a second. Um, let's try figurine, as I said earlier. Um, 
let's try a Pokemon. Maybe, maybe something like that, yeah. Um, let's set a 3D model of a cute little polar bear. Um, we could also say maybe just a normal bear, full body, dark background, maybe it's clear background. Um, and I'll show you the importance of prompting in a second. Um, we can now hit generate. And this generates a new image. It takes around 4 to 5 seconds, as I already said. And um, as you can see, the image is now blurry. Um, in that case, you increase the interference steps to around 30 and hit generate again. And in this case, it should now generate a new image which isn't blurry. Um, we'll see that in a second. And done. Uh, in my case, I don't like this image, so let's adjust the prompt a bit. Um, for example, let's say you don't want it to be 3D like, let's say you want it to be photorealistic, so we can say photorealistic, um, photo 33 millimeter. Um, it's all about prompting basically, and if we go into, if we open the prompt library again, you can see for these realistic images, um, there's always some kind of uh, photorealistic prompt involved. This one is pretty for photorealistic. We can just see what it is. It has hyper maximalist octane render photorealism cinematic realism Unreal Engine. Let's just copy that and put it into our prompt. So you can see what I mean. And let's also adjust the guidance scale, interference steps, and let's generate it again. This should now stick more to the prompt as we increase the guidance scale and it should generate a more photorealistic image as we just added those uh, prompts. And now we generate and it generates a new image and that image should now be more photorealistic. And it's blurry again. So let's increase the steps again to 35. And let's try it again. And it should be finished in a few seconds. Um, that error sometimes happens um, because the AI model isn't fully finished, that should be fixed soon. As you can see, that's a bit more photorealistic now, with less of this 3D style. And you could even increase it further if you say, for example, clear background, let's remove that. Um, let's also, let's just say, um, cute little bear cup, full body. Let's generate again. And um, I would suggest you play around with the prompt a bit, because the prompt makes or breaks the image and as you can see that gives us a completely new style um, and if you know for example change it to Disney style Pixar character this gives it again a completely new style so I would suggest you add your st the style you want to the prompt uh, and be as detailed as possible as you can see that gives it a whole new styling um, let's actually use this one for 3d generation so it says here save to home so we can go into home, hit download, go into image to 3D, just drag and drop it here as well. Shaded, we can keep it at shaded. PBR generates um, normal maps and roughness maps and metallic maps, but we don't really need that in this case. Let's keep it also at medium and let's it generate. And now after like a minute, it generated a 3D model. As you can see, this is it. Um, the texture is out and great, and this is where texture AI comes in. You could now um, put this model here into texture eye, load it in here. Let's also generate one last image to kind of show what it's also capable of. Because one cool thing about this model is it also generates text. Um, so for example, you could um, say something like a figurine of a cute, let's say, not say Disney character, let's say of a cute Pokemon, holding up a sign saying 3D eye Studio is the best, style as 3D model, full body. And what this does is it actually generates an uh, image with text. So you could um, use this for basically whatever you want. Okay, this is a bad example. Let's try it again. Um, a cute character. Let's try character. And as you can see, this is like a lot of R&D. You basically have to try out which works best, uh, which doesn't. And let's see this again. And this is already way better. Let's increase the guidance scale, because when you have text, this is more important. Let's hit generate again, so it sticks more to the prompt. Um, and now it should actually generate the text a bit better. And as you can see, way, way better.
but now the character is S. So you gotta play around with the prompt to figure out what settings are best, what generates the best thing. And this also um, is free, so you can basically just play around with it however you like. Um, yeah, I hope this uh, short tutorial was helpful. You can also use the end paint, for example. Um, you upload an image and select the part you want to change. Um, you can select the part of the image and then uh, write what you want to change, but don't write it in um, like, I want to change something. Always write it in keywords. You would do the same here in uh, the normal image, uh, image of 3D. You would, also, you would always say um, attributes, for example, character, comma, stylized. You wouldn't say, I want a character of the, the, the. You would also use commas and attributes to describe the character. Real time is also pretty cool. You can, for example, 3D to real time, the one we just generated. Um, and as you can see, it already generates an image, but we will adjust the prompt hammer, stylized game asset. And um, that generates an image in real time. Uh, you can use this, for example, if you want to redo an image or you kind of want to see what it could look like in another styling and another setting. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. You can also screen share. For example, if you're using Blender, you could screen share Blender and generate a cool image based on your screen. Um, but that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful. If you have any more questions, feel free to, to drop them in the comments. You can like generate super cool 3D models, as you can see here in the 3D library. For example, this uh, 3D assets which, which was generated is pretty cool as well. Um, yeah, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys soon.